Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for spending time with me today. Uh, I'm your host, Melanie Brummer, uh, and the reason I wanted to have this conversation today is because I have an online course uh, about costing and pricing your pro products uh, that helps people who want to take a product uh, and work out the pricing step by step. Uh, through all of those steps from start to finish so that you can you can work through one of your products uh, from start to finish and end the process uh, with a price for that product. Now, I have invited another pricing expert in to chat with me today, and that is Diane Lindemann. And Diane really works with the other side of uh, the pricing question. And that is, uh, Diane works around all the self-esteem stuff, uh, which is the really, really deep work with product pricing. Uh, so I thought that today, Diane and I could have a conversation uh, because I'm pretty certain uh, that between us, uh, we can share some insights that will be helpful to you in your business. So over to you, Diane, if you will introduce yourself to everyone, just tell us your background with product pricing, uh, a little bit about more about your pro you, what you do and your products around uh, this topic, uh, so that everybody has a little bit of background on who you are. Hi, Melanie. So yes, um, I think we could most probably talk for the whole day. <laughs> just limit ourselves all right particularly because this is a subject that we're both super passionate about all right so hi i'm diane um i have a business called the elevation coach and i just you know it's always you can kind of go down this road of introducing yourself but i want to just introduce myself specifically in terms of pricing and specifically product pricing because i think sometimes that's where the challenge comes in that there's such a lot of people who are able to tell you around um, service-based pricing. Do you know what I mean? There's lots of stuff out there around service-based pricing and charge your worth and what a what a fish-based, okay? But but there's not a load of people that focus in product pricing in the way that I do, all right? And I have, uh, everything I do is based on both service and product. Do you know what I mean? You can use it in both. So, yep, I used to work in predictive analytics. Um, and the easiest way to explain that to people is that I worked with retailers with um, I've worked with retailers I've worked with service-based business I've worked with lots of product-based businesses as well we we are taking customer insight and strategy and then deciding on price okay and then and then kind of looking at it but my area of expertise is in what I call the psychology of pricing right so Melanie's area of expertise is take this add on you know cost plus whatever water water fish base that's my favorite saying you'll you'll get used to it all right mine is a little bit deeper than that like melanie said looking at you you from the perspective of the entrepreneur do you know what i mean and you always hear this thing saying charge your worth i call bullshit we can talk about that okay but it's that and then i talk about stuff like neuromarketing all right um biohacking um, engineering the perception lens through which your your client sees you and all of that is the background stuff and then also looking at uh because as a product-based business you often are operating in quite a competitive market right and i talk about how do you how do you make the competitor obsolete how do you take something that is a product-based business, right, if we look at products, and how do you then engineer that perception lens through a whole lot of stuff together with pricing that the, um, that the buyer comes to you and does not even consider the competitor. The competitor just, and, and that's a huge thing, particularly for female-based entrepreneurs mm -hmm. to get around. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Melanie, if you've seen that, but but female-based entrepreneurs often get into what I call comparisonitis. Okay. Yes. Oh yes. my goodness. Yes. So and so is doing this and they're charging that. Okay. So if I'm doing that, I must add this on and then still charge the same as that. Or worse still, I must come in at just under what they're charging. That's the that's the one that frightens me the most. 
Can, because can, right can, can you explore that one? Because that's the one that fr okay. frightens me the most. Because particularly people who make handcrafts tend oh, to no, follow good. that strategy. They'll go, oh, this one's charging this much. I'm going to come in just under that. So at least I get the business. Yes, yes. But you're not going to get the business, okay? Because the perception lens is engineered way before the person even looks at your price. All right, and I'm going to say that slowly again. The, the perception lens is engineered before the person sees your price. Mm. Okay. Now what happens is if you engineer a perception lens of a business that is bespoke, handmade products, all right, lots of love and care gone into it, and I get to where your pricing is and you've taken somebody who does something similar, whatever that is, and you've priced it underneath. Guess what you've just done? You've destroyed my perception lens. Mm. And, my, and my brain mm -hmm. goes into, hang on, where's she lying? Okay. 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 Where or he lying? Where mm. they lying? Mm -hmm. They're either lying on creating the perception when I get to the price. Yes. Or they're lying about the price and it becomes inferior. So if mm -hmm. they if they believe all the stuff that you're doing, right? Yes. Oh, you know, Melanie's got 20 years experience. Um, da -da -da, looking at that. Then they come to the price. They're like, this is an inferior product. Yes. Or they go to, oh, this is the shit she can't sell. <laughs> you know I mean? Sorry, I think I swear badly. But but it is that. that's exactly what goes on in their heads. Okay. Now you must understand that the client doesn't understand that that's going on for themselves. Yes. Right? yes. It's subconscious. It's subconscious. Yes. But something now is 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 kind of twinging them in their subconscious. And they go to what I call unsafety. Okay. It's now not safe. This yes. person hasn't taken me on a... What's wrong with this picture? Thing. There's something wrong. And I don't know where it is. Mm. And quite frankly, I don't care where it is. I just detach. Mm. All right. And off I go and I find somebody else. So, so would you say to a handcrafter like that, that their strategy should actually be to go straight for the premium price and don't back down? Yes. Yes, but you've got to you've got to um, you've got to understand. You know what I mean? Like, what are you trying to do? So, who's the client you're trying to attract? All right, and is that client going to be somebody who values what you're putting into it? Now, I want to say this up front: if you are going after clients who are not going to value what you are putting into something then your strategy falls flat. Mm -hmm. And then what's going to just happen all the time is that you're going to be pretty pissed off. Do you know what I mean? Because you're going to have clients that are coming in who are not the clients you particularly want to work with. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then selling to them and then you don't get the, you know, the heart, it, it, it feels wrong. Mm -hmm. And that client, when you ask them for a testimonial, all right, comes back and says, but I don't even understand why you want a testimonial. Do you know what yes. I mean? Like, like, yes. like this. It's horrible dealing and, with you. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, no, but it's something that just lies on, you know, somewhere in my house, whatever yes. it is. Yes. Yes. So you've got to, you've got to start from the beginning. Right? And I talk often, Melanie, about Building the economy class business versus building the first class business. And there's no, there's nothing wrong with building an economy class business. Please don't misunderstand me. But certainly the kind of people you're talking about, you don't want an economy class business, okay? Because an economy class business comes across as the hobby business. Yes. I'm doing this on the side to make pocket money. Mm. Mm -hmm. And my class reflects that. What what would you say to those who are tempted to try to be everything to everybody and say, well, I I I'd like to be a premium price business, but those customers only come in along once in a while. So I'm going to try and service the others too. Uh, because I've I've seen 
some people do that. And um, I was just wondering what your thoughts are. So I, I once say this, look, I always talk with my clients, all right, around something called a sunset and a sunrise strategy. So in this situation, I would talk with, with if it was you, let's say it was you. Can you hear that? A little. Is it okay? It's, it's fine. Like it's, it's not room. bad. I can still hear you. I can still hear okay, you. Okay, no, that's fine. If it gets bad, please just let me know, because otherwise then I can just go out and smack people. <laughs> so if, if it was you, Melanie, let's say, for instance, you had this where you're wanting to service everybody, and you're saying to me, these clients are only coming in once in a while, and I feel like I need to service these clients over here because I just, I, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? I cannot predict how many of those are coming in. Then we do a sunrise, sunset strategy, okay? Sunset strategy on the lower cost offerings that are attracting a certain client, all right? So we don't switch it off, but we do less and less and less of that. And we systematically increase our pricing with those clients, all right, okay? And then we build a sunrise strategy for the other part of the business that is attracting the premium base clients, all right? And we, we, we work more on that. So you can see that we, we're setting this one. We're trying to pull some of these people through the, this and we're going mm. there. Mm. But, but you will focus more on your sunrise strategy. Mm, mm. I love that. I love that. I absolutely love that. Uh, because it's not an either or. And, and you're taking people from where they are and, and helping them to just calibrate to a place that, that is more financially sustainable. Yep, yep, yep. And, and that, that is the premium price business, okay? You see, it's about the experience in a premium price business. Mm. Mm. The price often becomes secondary in a premium price business, product-based business. Because the experience that I have, how this is sold to me becomes far more important than the fact that I'm having to haul out X amount of money to pay for it. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Pure gold. <laughs> My ears are wide open. I'm just sucking it all in. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. So I also say that in an economy class business, when somebody can't, and, and look, we could take a whole lot of examples, but in an economy class business, when somebody cannot afford you, they feel guilty, which is a fucking bad emotion. Do you know what I mean? They feel guilty that they can't afford you. But if we switch it to the premium class business and they cannot afford you, it becomes aspirational to afford oh, you later. That's beautiful. Yes. That's beautiful. Okay, so it's like... That's beautiful. Yeah, and, and can you see how it's completely different? Mm, it's, and it's, a, a great way of reframing it for those people who, who, who are struggling to get through that. that uh, I speak to so many creatives who say, I know my pricing is too cheap. And, and it's like, well, why don't you start with 5%? Well, no, that's not enough. It should go up by 50%. And you say, well... Well, put it up by 50%, and then they say, well, then we can't find a customer there at that price. Uh, and because they're in that fear space, they do nothing. Uh, mm. So what mm. I'm loving about what you've just described is it, it shows a way through that confusion and that fear. Uh, and that, for me, is beautiful. So thank you for sharing that. It's a pleasure. So if we go to that, that fear space, right, and, and I'll share something personal from, from my own. Because So I'll share two things. So for very, very many people, right, they didn't, they didn't come to their business as a 20-year-old, right? Many people. They came to their business 
from having worked for somebody else, all right? And remember, there your value was determined by that individual. Mm. You did not determine your own value there, all mm. right? So it depends on what you did there, how far up this ladder you were, how mm. your value was determined. So now what happens is they join, they start their own business. And now suddenly everybody's telling them, determine your worth. Mm. But you can't determine your worth because potentially what you're doing now is very different to what you were doing before, mm. right? And you've never determined your own worth. Mm. So mm. it's like, well, what do I do? And nine times out of 10 for most of us, we, you know, there's this this thing that says, oh, I made my salary in three months. Bullshit. Okay. Those people are wrong. They're talking absolute nonsense. Unless they went with clients, do you know what I mean? Who who they used that or they stole stuff from wherever they were working and they priced according to that. So that's why this strategy works. Do you know what I mean? It's like just go to where you where you're just going to the edge of your fear, just the edge of your fear. All right. So let's say you say let's do five percent and they say 50. We say, no, 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 no. How about trying 7.5? Okay, 7.5. Let's do 7.5. Mm. And the other thing, Melanie, that I just want to put on record now is I don't know if you know this, but Amazon reviews their pricing every two minutes. Every two minutes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you can review your pricing as often as you want to if you've got the money. Do you know what I mean? Like, and they review pricing every two minutes. Most big retailers, most big retailers, both international and local, review their pricing on a weekly basis, and it's normally done on a Monday, right? So what we're doing then on that Monday morning is we're reviewing abandoned cart, right? What's being abandoned, what's selling well, what isn't selling well. And it's, it's far more complicated than that, but, but just to dumb it, to simplify it, not dumb it down, but make it simplistic. We're looking at what sold well, what didn't sell well. What are we predicting is going to happen in the next week? Okay. What costs have come in in the last week that were unforeseen? Do you know what I mean? Like, like ESCOM now, if you're in the South African context and we're looking at load shedding, now we have to relook. Do you know what I mean? We relook. So Monday is often that's we call it shutdown day. So then it's decision making day, and then they will go and they will they will increase their pricing. So my question to your entrepreneurs is, how often are you looking at your pricing? Yes, because 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 most entrepreneurs that I speak to want to pay down the price, and that's what we're going to sell at the whole year. And please don't ask me to look at it again. <laughs> and then when you do ask them, Melanie, then they use words like, this. no, 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 but I gave a client the price, okay, and now the client's going to give me shit, all right, and the client's going to say, but, 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 you gave me that price, and now, uh, uh, so the expectation from you is that, number one, the client remembered the price, number two, the client is saving to buy something from you, and number three, that the client is going to give you hassle, stop it, okay, mm -hmm. just stop it right? So you can use it constantly as a marketing exercise. I've, I'm busy doing it with somebody who has a has a, a bee-based fuzzy, honey, or soaps, that kind of stuff. Okay. Literally going to the clients and saying, okay, you know, I'm increasing my pricing, okay, as of this date, this will be my new price. No apology, as of this, no, no reason why. So she wants to give a reason. I said, your reason is I have spent time upgrading my business. Do you know what I mean? There's one particular thing that she's doing differently. I am using more um, recycled packaging, whatever. That's necessitated an increase. Boom. As of when, I think we're choosing next week, Friday. As of next week, Friday, this price will go up. But if you had asked me for a quotation or had put stuff into your trolley on my website before, I will honor that price until next week friday mm. you know what i mean mm. so now mm. what i'm doing is i'm not only increasing my price 
but I'm driving people who have not made a decision to make a decision to buy now. now. Yes, yes. I used to, I used to do that very successfully um, uh, when when I still had a product like a hard product based business because I now sell digital product. But I remember when I had a hard product business, um, I always used to increase my prices at the beginning of the year because that was that made sense to my customers. And I would start saying to them at the beginning of November, remember our annual price increase is coming up at the end of the calendar year. You have a month to order at the old pricing now. It's going to go up by 10 to 15 percent. And, and I was able to drive extra sales over my Christmas period using that strategy. So now you see, and Christmas was clear, was what Christmas a quiet period for you? Uh, it could be. It, it used to run for the first two weeks of December and then go quiet. So what this meant was that it carried me into December. And then what I did in January was I used to say to people, I've received some emails from some of you who, who said, mentioned that you missed my notification of the price increase. I'm going to be very kind and give you the stock at last, at the last year's price, providing you order now. And that would then give me sales in January, which I normally didn't get. There we go. So there's the strategy. Now it's kind of, but now this is strategy, you see. And, and I should say that. So for those of you who are working, I'm a strategist at heart. I'm constantly looking at strategy. Do you know what I mean? Like, what's the strategy? So now, Melanie, you would have looked through your business and realized January, half of December is quiet. January is quiet. How do I drive sales there? Okay. So what's my strat? My strat is to have a price increase, but you do it. My strat in Jan is to drive people who I know struggle to make a decision now to make a decision right and that is why reflection in a business is so so critical right it's not only understanding how much money you've made in the last month it's understanding those background things right mm -hmm. so in a product-based business some of the stuff i talk about is What's my cart abandonment rate? Okay. At what point did they abandon my cart? If I'm online, so in your digital world, it would be that. All right. Do they abandon as soon as they put it into the cart? Or can I see that they already looked at, you know what I mean? Like, mm. And if you're using technology, all of the websites show you this. Now I do a specific strategy to that person saying, I noticed that you put something in the cart, you didn't, all right? Please understand that I'm running a special on this in the next week, da, 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 and you can, you can go and do this, and then you're driving traffic. Mm -hmm. You also then are able to see if they're abandoning, all right, is go and look at the competitor. What is the competitor offering, a, you know, like yours? If you're seeing there's, okay, the competitor's offering 100 Rand less or however much, $10 less, Maybe I just run a promotion just for that product or I say bar with bar. I look at what the competitor is putting bar with bar on the bigger websites if I can. All right. Can you see how this is reflection? And th this is pricing strategy that we're constantly looking at. Mm -hmm. So that's one component. But the other component is the one that you spoke about. Right. And this is the let's call it self-esteem. Except I call it wealth consciousness, all right? Okay. And I speak a lot about we carry trauma, right? We carry many different traumas. But one of the traumas that we carry within us is our perception of money mm -hmm. and how we sabotage ourselves around money, okay? Okay. So I want to give you I want to give you an example from my own life. There's many, and it's it's quite in depth, hectic work. You know, I, I always make sure that people bring tissues and stuff. And I have a I have a therapist who works. Which is why and, you do this work, and I do my little my step yeah, by step yeah. course. <laughs> okay. You know, I do that, but then I've got a therapist, two therapists in Africa, who work with with the women or the men or whoever as it comes up. Okay. So one of the things that I discovered this year, which was super interesting for me, 
was that I, at my heart, have a rejection sabotage. All right, now, now I'll give you the story to, to show you how this actually plays out in your business around pricing and stuff. Okay, so I, I've always worn glasses. I um, had my first eye operation when I was 18 months old. And one of the things, and it's not that somebody's told me because I, I, I remember stuff that my parents were completely shocked that I remembered. And it's my earliest memory is I remember being in the hospital and being tied to my cot in the hospital, right? With a bandage over my left eye. Do you know what I mean? Over my left eye, because it's my left eye, that's the problem. And trying to get to my bottle with my feet. And around me, I can see what I'm wearing and it's twilight, all right? That has manifested into my body as rejection. I wasn't good enough for my parents to stay there. My parents are no longer alive, so I can't ask them. But if I go back in time, my view is I was most probably scratching my eye because my mom did say that. She was scratching your eye and they had to stop you because if I got the bandage off and the stitches, then it's an even bigger issue. Um, but I wasn't good enough. Does that make sense? I wasn't good okay. enough for somebody to hold me. Okay. Now, in those days, that was in the 1970s. In those days, okay, actually, it was in 1971. So that's like a hell of a long time ago. Because, you know, towards the 80s, we were changing slightly. Is most probably my parents weren't allowed in the hospital overnight. Do you know what yes. I mean? You yes. just like left there. You weren't think so it's not like they rejected me all right and then there's a couple of other things that have added on to that all right so how does that play out in pricing in my business and the way I do it I reject before you reject ah uh, okay 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 so what that means is that I will sabotage myself right yes. I will have an idea and I, it will be a new idea and I will be shitting myself that this is going to work or not. So rather than have the clients not sign up, you know what I mean? That's a rejection. I reject them. I don't follow up. Mm. I, I pull out of a launch halfway. Mm. I say I'm going to do something mm. and I don't do it. All right. So that's one part of my rejection. Mm. The other part of my rejection is that I over deliver. Okay, yes. so I say you're going to get A, but then when you work with me, because I don't <laughs> want you to reject me in that hospital, do you know what I mean? I now over deliver completely. Yes. I break my boundaries. I tell you that you're going to get A, but I give you A, B, C, D, E. Right. Yes. Now, this is profound work for people to understand because it's not something you've you've consciously considered, but when I talk it through, people are like, "Oh my God, I can literally see." Mm -hmm. It's it's like the the like you had my ears suddenly go open. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh my shattered nerves! I never ever considered this. All right, mm -hmm. and then we'll have to work through that. Do you know what I mean? To heal that. Mm -hmm at a heart level, not a mindset level, not a mind level, a heart level, we have to heal it there. And then suddenly the, it's like a new version emerges and, and you can talk about it. Do you know what I mean? And you can say, okay, how do I put in place the strategy so that I don't allow myself to do this again? So maybe that's, I don't know, automation or somebody else follows up with the client or, you know, you have a coach that works with you who's side by side with you as you're putting out the offer. Now, that is the work I do before we even get to how do I price my stuff? Mm, 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 mm. Because otherwise we get to where you are. No, I need to put it up by 50%, but I can't put it up by 50% because nobody's going to pay 50%, mm, all right? Mm, mm. Not that to pay 50%. It's that you've convinced yourself through a saboteur, whatever that saboteur is, mm. that they won't do it. Do you think maybe the challenge also is that um, because pricing is a numbers thing, everyone thinks it's an analytical thing when in fact it is a hard thing. So, And it's actually so ironic because your, your creatives always go, 
the numbers in my business aren't for me because I'm not analytical. And yet the, the, the underlying work that we need to do is hard work. And that's theoretically the work that creatives enjoy. Yes, yes. And look, they've got to start with, they've got to start with what does wealth mean to me? Okay. What yeah. does wealth mean to me? And once they've defined that, and for most creatives, whatever, it's freedom. Do you know what I mean? It's freedom to create. All right? It's enough money to buy more art supplies. Well, there we go. For me, it's stationary. Do you know what I mean? Like I have to make it. It used to be to feed my children when they were so younger. Now it is to buy stationary. All right. Um, <laughs> And the thing is, it's kind of looking at that and then saying, okay, but how am I jeopardizing that? What am I doing that doesn't allow me to do it? So yes, it is hard work. Look, there is, there is in, so I said to you, I talk about neuromarketing and neuromarketing is all about the numbers. Do you know what I mean? Like, how do you put the numbers? How do you change these numbers? What does one number mean versus another number? How do, how does that land? Uh, I mean, last week I did a masterclass and the one lady just looked at me like this, all right, she was, because we role played and I asked her a question, I asked her, what's the price? And she went like, that. I said, no, that's not the way to do it, all right? And then I said to her, so we'll take it from a creative perspective, all right? Let's take an artist like you. Somebody comes to you and they want a garment made, right? Okay. Now, it's bespoke. I can't give them a price off the top of my head, right? But what I've got to do is I've got to gauge where they are in the pricing thing. So then I would say something like, uh, and I'll just use like a script, is based on the information you've given me, Melanie, and my experience in creating something for what you're looking at, you're looking between 30,000 to 10,000. You see, what most people do is they go from 10,000 to 30,000, but the person psychologically anchors themselves to the first figure you get. Right. Okay. So they've anchored to 10,000. Okay. When you tell them it's 15,000, they go, no, but that's 50% more than what you said, but you said 30. All right. Yeah. So we've got a flip the switch to saying that's the high so number. So interesting. And that's then the So number. interesting. Okay. And then you ask the question, how does that feel for you? Yes. Now the person goes, holy shit. That's far too much money. I'm only going to wear it once. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to wear this garment once, all right? Yes. Then I've got to get into what, where are you wearing the garment, okay? What do you want to be remembered for on that, on that, on that? And something along the lines of, okay, but let's say you're wearing it to your daughter's wedding. I don't know. I'm using an example from my own life, okay? So you're going to wear it to your daughter's wedding. Okay, so you're going to wear it once, Melanie. But my assumption is there's going to be professional photographs taken. Yep. Those will live forever. Yep. Do you want to look classic in those photographs forever? That you don't have to go and Photoshop them later on? Yes. Is there a plan to put together a photo book? Are you thinking of having some of them framed in your home? Yes. Do you see now how I'm anchoring them into the value? Yes. So what's the, so what's the photographer charging? Yes. I also find it very interesting how you're anchoring them through questioning and not by telling. Yes. So it's like, and, and that's the thing. Do you know what I mean? Now she goes and she says, no, I can't afford it. Do you know what I mean? Like you're out of my budget. Now, the other strategy is to say, I'd really love to work with you, but it's clear kind of my where I'm pegging my, so my product is not where you are. But I've got this friend of mine, let's call her Bianca, that's my daughter's name. I've got this friend of mine who works in a similar to me, and she works with people in your budget range. Can I refer you? Mm, mm, mm. 
And now what's happening in the background, you're referring to Bianca and you're making money from a referral to Bianca. Mm-hmm. And this is where creative struggle. Do you know what I mean? Like, like most people struggle with this. They're like, I can't do that. Says who? That person would not have had the client without me. So I was I was having this discussion with somebody in a in a learning group this week. Um, and and I find that people in my environment are reluctant to refer because they're worried that if anything goes wrong, they'll get blamed later down the way, down the line. Then you've got to make sure that you're of who you're referring to is somebody that you can fundamentally trust. Mm. Right? I, 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 What's go wrong is to is to then have the conversation with the client saying that hasn't been my experience of the person. Mm. I'm really I'm really grateful that you've shared that experience with me. It has changed my perspective of them, all right? And I will now hesitate in future to actually refer. Okay. Don't okay. Don't, don't put it on you, all right? Okay. 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 That's a great insight. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I thought, yep. So, Diane, we we are going to have to wind up at some point, and I would like to ask you one question before we do, because I know that this can fill a whole other chapter. Um, And that is, what are the top mistakes you see people make around pricing? I would say um, not fundamentally understanding what I've been speaking about, that somebody has made a decision on your price way before they've even seen your price. And you've got to engineer them into that price, all right? So I know you live in the Western Cape in Cape Town, okay? And um, I went to this place yesterday, all right? I don't know if you've been there. It's one of yeah, my favorite uh, places. I haven't been there. I'm I'm a little bit further north. I'm I'm near the yes. rest. So if you're near front, you'll go to Babylon Square. Yes, I, I love Babylon. the place by reputation. It's apparently very beautiful. Okay, but they engineer your buyer perception from the moment you enter there. Yes. Okay. From the moment you enter there. So when you enter their product shop all right, where they sell products or the restaurant or whatever, you are not bulking at a at a gin and tonic that is 100 rand, okay? Because the, it's been engineered all the way that this is the first class experience. This is where to take photographs. Do you know what I mean? Like, like this is engineered and that's what where people make a mistake. So, I could, I would go somewhere else and go, mother trucker, 100 rand for a gin and tonic, all right? Yes. But at, at, yeah, I'm looking at the way it's presented, how it's even presented on the menu. And I'm like, oh, 100 rand. Okay, it's not. Do you know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> so, because, because they're pulling me into the experience. That's the first mistake. Okay. okay. The second mistake is really getting into this comparison artist kind of environment it is super super difficult and we do it all the time Mm. but it's pulling yourself out and really starting to understand what you bring to the party versus somebody else right Mm. the you know melanie you offer pricing i offer pricing we're sitting on a call together all right Mm. collaborating other people are going going, how on earth can she be talking to melanie (laughs) Melanie, whatever she's got okay and go and use it again I, it doesn't matter do you know what I mean like yes. I've got my skill set you've got yours so stop yes. that yes. stop that and you can understand that on social media people are putting their best foot forward they're not actually showing you what's going on so that's the second thing just get out of the comparison artist and then the third one is that one that I spoke about reflection do you know what I mean like understand that the greatest gift you can give your business is to consistently be reflecting on your business. That's so beautiful. That's because so beautiful. Because only through that do you figure out what to do next. Yes, yes, yes. I think too many people are working from order to order and don't <laughs> stop and pull back enough. And, and it li- that's what I'm saying, you know, Amazon does it every two minutes. Okay. <laughs> um, 
and other big retailers out there are doing it once a week. You know what I mean? They they look at it, they do it, some of them do it twice a week, but but they're kind of going there. And we're wanting to learn from those people. It's not about saying, I'm not that big. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, Diane, don't use Amazon as an example. Diane, don't use a big retailer like H&M as an example if we used one of them. Do you know what I mean? Don't use mm. those because I'm not that big. No, 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 ladies and gents, it's not about that. It's not resisting. It's saying, how do I take what they're doing into my business in a way that works for me? I love that. I love that. I'm so pleased we've had this conversation today. Thank you. That's a pleasure. Thank you. Wow. Um, you've, given, you've given everybody so much to think about. Uh, and I see we, we're headed at 50 minutes is, is a, long, a long time for people to pay attention. So I think I'm going to wind it up. Um, Diane, that was absolutely incredible. Um, so much value there. And to those of you who are watching who are going, why, why are these two women collaborating? I'm quite certain that for those of you who are watching, you're going to go, oh, I think I want to work with Diane. And some of you are going to go, oh, I think I want to work with Melanie uh, because you're in different places in your journey. And uh, we have what you need where you are in your journey today. So uh, for those of you who are afraid of collaboration, this is what it looks like. <laughs> Um, it's wonderful. It's it's wonderful to talk to somebody who talks my language and who can can corroborate all these things that I'm 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 trying to say here in my groups. Um, I really really appreciate your time, your insights, your gifts, and your generosity Absolutely. that you shared today. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure, an absolute pleasure. So, uh, all right, yeah. You know. And yeah. do you have anything to say in parting, Diane? You know, I, I want to say this, right, and I'm going to get it wrong. So I just need to open it on my machine. If you give me one second, because I always get it wrong. Um, where is it? Session one. Session one. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I can't find it. Um. It's a Robin Sharma quote. Right. I just want to just give it to you because it's one of the most profound ones. And I often use it to start anything pricing. Because I can't find it. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> isn't that what always happens? All right. But it goes like this. And what we can do is we can search for it and always put it in the in the description. Yeah, I'll, of the I'll video. put it in the description, but it goes something like this, okay? Your pricing or your your success in your business, okay, is a direct reflection of your self worth. How you view yourself. Yes. And I want to say that the second thing I want to say is, it's not around affordability it's not making your products more affordable for your clients mm. it's upgrading your clients to afford you oh i love that i yeah. love that i love yeah. that so i'll send you those two you know what I mean? i've done them as like little okay. quotes okay that's but awesome that's where i want to end do you know what i mean like like yeah, because those are profound shifts around. Mm. Okay, what I mean. Totally, like totally. What what valuable reframes? I am taking those home. I'm taking them to the bank. <laughs> Thank, you. Right. Thank you, everybody. I hope you learned from that and you enjoyed it. Have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful.